Hey everyone, it's Natasha. In today's video, I wanted to show you Saxon Math 5.4. This is the student book and I have the tests and worksheets and I'm going to show you kind of how these work together. I didn't bring up the solutions manual, but that is just like it says, it's the solutions to the problems. Okay, I do recommend that you take the placement test for Saxon. I will link it down below so you can see if this level is a good fit for your child. All right, this is traditionally used for fourth graders, but it can also be used for fifth graders, but really it can be used for any graders, <laughs> any graders. Um, take the placement test, that is my biggest thing. Okay, so Saxon Math, they tell you you should not skip any problems, but let's look at the contents. You can actually see the contents in full on christianbook.com, so I will not spend a lot of time on this because you can go to Christian Books website and see that but basically here's a letter from the author Stephen Hake and it says solving each problem day after day is the secret to success okay remember solve every problem in every practice set every problem set and every investigation do not skip problems with honest effort you will experience success and true learning that will stay with you and serve you well in the future now a lot of people still skip problems okay I mean they, they do but it is not intended to be done that way. In fact, this version, this is the newest version of Saxon 5.4 is actually not written by John Saxon, it's written by Stephen Hake. Um, there's a really fascinating Saxon video that another YouTuber did. I'm gonna link that down below. True like Saxon purists would never consider this, but I actually um, was looking for the older edition of 5.4 and the original like first or second edition and they're extremely hard to come by. People know they're kind of in demand and, and make them very expensive on eBay. So anyway, it is what it is. But I'm, uh, anyway, <laughs> okay. So then we have the preface, the Saxon philosophy. It's an incremental development. So, and it has continual, continual review. So people would say this is a spiral program, but they say it's an incremental program with continual review. So concepts are taught in little bits and pieces and added on more to each lesson basically. And then there's a continual review throughout every lesson. So that's kind of how that works. It's like little steps to build up and then at the same time reviewing everything you've learned up to that point. That's a very basic understanding of it, but you can read that. Um, there's the textbook, the test and worksheets, which is this book I have here, and the solutions manual. There is no teacher guide because this is written to the student, but I'm gonna talk about that in a second. Okay, um, again, it says it's crucial to complete all the lessons and investigations. Like they, they really wanna, you know, tell you that. So there's 120 lessons, but don't think that it's only gonna take you 120 days and I'll explain why in a second. But anyways, it's, there's four sections of the lessons. There's warm up, new concept, lesson practice, and mixed practice. So it says the warm-up should take 10 to 15 minutes, the new concepts 5 to 15 minutes, the lesson practice 5 to 10 minutes, and the mixed practice 20 to 40 minutes. Okay, so if we go with the upper end, 40, 50, 65, 80. 80 minutes on a lesson. See, this is why people don't do every problem, okay? <laughs> but anyway, that's the recommended time. All right, and then there's the investigations, and then there's tests. There's 23 cumulative tests. They start after lesson 10, and then they're every five lessons. There's also investigations. I think there's like 12 of them. Does it say? Uh, no, but if we go back to the beginning, I think it says. Let's see how many investigations there are. 12, I was right. Okay, so if you add the 120 lessons plus the 23 tests plus the 12 investigations, um, I don't know what that equals, but obviously it's more than 120. All right, and then how to get help if you get stuck. Then here is a list of materials you will need. So mainly for the investigations, but sometimes for the lessons too. Actually, I shouldn't even say mainly for the investigations. I think it's pretty split even. But things like dollar bill, calculator, envelope, calendar, a mirror, online paper, colored pencils, a box, glue, cereal box, that sort of thing. Okay, and then here is what the lessons look like. So there's always a warm up, new concepts with examples. Okay, so this is all the lesson. 
The whole thing was a lesson, lesson practice. So this is, what did you just learn? Practice that. Make sure you got that. And then the mixed practice, okay? And then we get into lesson two. So here again, we have the warm up, the new concept. So it's short on that one. Lesson practice, mixed practice, 26. They seem to range around 26, 27 problems in that mixed practice. Now, here is something I did. I used to teach in a classroom that had a third through fifth grade combo class. And so when I was using Saxon 5-4 in that class, considering it was a, a combo class too and I had multiple math uh, curriculum to teach, what I would do is uh, we would do the warm up together. So I'd have all the 5-4 students get out their individual whiteboards and we would do the warm up on their individual whiteboards. Now the first thing it says is facts practice, 100 edition facts, test A. Okay, so that is in here. So you can see facts, practice, tests, and activity sheets for use of lesson one, two, three, and so forth, okay? So here is the facts practice for use with lesson one. Okay, so that's for lesson one, lesson two, lesson three. Okay, since we're gonna look at lesson three right here, okay? This is the facts practice sheet they would use. I believe you set a timer for five minutes if I'm remembering correctly. It's been a while since I've done this level. So yes, it's five minutes. So you would set a timer and they would have five minutes to do as much of this as they can. Obviously the goal is you want them to try to do them all in five minutes. Okay, then you're going to do mental math at 10, 20, or 30 to a number. So this is when I would have my students or your own children, whatever, but your students answer these with mental math. So they would just, I would have them write on the individual whiteboard um, I wouldn't make them write out the problem, they would just need to write out the answer. So I would say 20 plus 20. They would write on their 40 and then show me their whiteboard. And so we would go through them like that. Okay, and then here we have vocabulary. Copy these two patterns on a piece of paper and each of the six boxes write either add end or sum. And then we have the new concepts here. And in bold, it's talking about sequences and that's what we're gonna talk about here. And then we have some examples. Then we get to the lesson practice, and this is what I would do with my students. So in other words, I would say write the rule and the next three numbers of each counting sequence, right? And so they would write on their individual whiteboards, or you could do it on paper, whatever, and they would finish this, right? And so we'd go through each one just like that. And so that would tell me, did they get this lesson? Okay, did they get this lesson? And if they did, then they'd move on and do the mixed practice on their own. Okay, if they, let's say they missed most of these. Okay, then I would say, okay, clearly they didn't get that lesson. Let's go back. Let's try that again. <laughs> and we'd go over the lesson again. But once I was sure they had that lesson information down, they would move to the mixed practice and do that on their own. Okay, however, let's look at the next lesson to give you an, an alternative way to do this. Your student can literally just sit down and do this on their own. You can time them with their addition fact sheet. You can have them just, you know, write on here or another piece of paper or something for their warm up. They can read the new concept themselves. They can do the lesson practice themselves. You can even have them stop at this point and say, hey, when you're done with your lesson practice, come show it to me to make sure you've got it. And then once they have all those correct, you can say, okay, go ahead and do your mixed practice because this is written to the student. There is no separate teacher guide, like I said. So you can utilize this really however you want. Or you can just do the warm up with them and then let them go. I mean, really, however you want to do that. As you can see, and there's no real color, there's some blue, but that's about it. But there is pictures of money. I actually have a video on Instagram that shows some manipulatives and things that I'm going to be using with this. This doesn't come with any manip manipulatives or anything like that, but I kind of explain my planning process in that. So you can take a look at that, but the lessons literally run the same way. Now, let me show you an investigation. Okay, so here's an investigation. This is a focus on percents, okay? And so in this, they're going to need an activity sheet 22 
that's in here. So we're gonna look here. We're gonna say activity sheet 12. Nope, we need activity sheet 22. So we're gonna keep going. Activity sheet 18, 19, 20. Activity sheet 22. Okay, so that is what it looks like. I'm not gonna flip through the whole thing, but you get the idea. Now let's take a little bit of a closer look at this. So we start off, as you saw, with our addition facts practice, okay? We have some $1 bills here. This will be for an activity for use with lesson four. Some of those, some of those. Okay, so if you have play money already, you don't need to cut all these out, okay? But it does give you what you need, so you don't have to have any other manipulatives, and that's what I mean. Okay, so we have a place value template here for use with lesson four. Then we got more addition facts. There's one for every lesson in the book. So now we are moving on to subtraction, addition, subtraction, and got more addition. We have a hundred numbers chart for use with lesson 12. Okay, we're back to addition facts, subtraction facts, hundreds number chart, so forth. Okay, let me get to about the middle here. We've got multiplication facts, division facts. We've got um, for use with investigation nine, halves, fourths, eighths. Again, this is something I have manipulatives of. And so we won't have to cut these out because they already have manipulatives that are basically the exact same thing. But we don't have to buy any, any manipulatives. So that is the really nice part. Okay, so okay, let's look at the test. So then the tests are in the back. Here we have a testing schedule. So test one covers material through lesson five and it's given after lesson 10. Okay, but it, so, Let's look at that again. Test one covers material through lesson five, but is given after lesson 10. So then after that, you have every five lessons you have a test. So first 10 lessons, then test, then after every five after that. Notice the last test covers material through lesson 115. You give that after lesson 120. So they're not actually tested in the last five lessons of the book, lessons 116 to 120. Okay, here's what the tests look like. So 20 problems. Kids actually tended to like test day when I was teaching because there was less work that day. Okay, but that's what those look like. And then, oh yeah, let me show you these in the back. The recording form. So we've got a facts practice form, a lesson worksheet, a mixed practice solutions, a scorecard and test solutions. So if you wanna keep track of scores and things, you have to turn in a portfolio, that sort of thing. You could use this, but um, you also don't have to use these. Okay, but that is all in there if you shouldn't need it. So that is basically it. That's how Saxon works. I hope that was helpful to you. So, oh, I guess I should say about the investigation. So those come, so basically you do lessons one through 10 and then you have a test. Let me go to the contents. And then an investigation. There's an investigation after every 10 lessons. So you see after lesson 20, investigation. So test after every five lessons once you've done the first 10, okay? So test after every five lessons, but then you're going to have an investigation after every 10. Notice that in the contents, it doesn't say, take your test after lesson 25, but there is a test there. So you have to keep that in mind and know when to give those tests. Basically, don't forget about the tests, okay? Now, the testing schedule, we just saw it, it was in there, but it, it's not listed in here, it doesn't say after lesson 45, give test. It does not, so 
you just keep going if you forget, you know? <laughs> and then you'll be like, hey, I forgot the test. So, anyway, that's just a little side note. But I hope that was helpful in helping you understand how this program works. It is a lot of work, but it is a solid program. So, it just depends on what you're looking for. Every math program is different and, you know, approaches math in a different way. So, I hope that was helpful. I have a lot of other math curriculum videos on my channel if you want to go check those out too. If you have any questions about Saxon, feel free to let me know. I have used every level from Saxon kinder K, kindergarten, all the way up to Algebra 1 half, either in the traditional classroom or in homeschool. I've used all those levels. So I'm pretty familiar with Saxon math, and you can ask me any questions that you'd like, and I'd be happy to try to answer, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye!